Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to the tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Automation Engineer. We are in chapter 8 and looking at the next topic or the last topic of this chapter that is 8.2 Adapting Test Automation to Environment and SUT Changes. This topic can also be considered the other way around that is with respect to planning the implementation of improving test automation and how do you do that? So in this particular section, we'll be understanding more about adapting and considering the planning parameters for implementing the improvement of the test automation. It's really critical and important for having a very careful planning and investigation before making changes to an existing task. Much effort has been expended in creating a robust test consisting of different automation frameworks and component libraries. So any change which is made must be very important to be considered in terms of impact on the reliability and performance of the task. So there are several components, several factors which need to be considered before you can actually utilize any of them. The very first parameter we are talking about is identify changes in the test environment components which simply means evaluate what changes and imp improvement need to be made. Do these require changes to the testing software, customization function libraries, or operating system? Which sector does it fall under? Each of these has an impact on how the task performs. Either way, you talk about the software, libraries, or operating system being a platform. The overall goal is to ensure automated tests continue to run in an efficient manner. Changes should be made incrementally so that the impact on the task can be measured through a limited run of test scripts because you never try to do it for the entire test at a time. I think we know it from the tool's uh, improvement point of view that uh, even when you adopt a new tool to the organization, you do not roll out to the entire organization at a time. So once, once it is found that no determinal effect exists, change can be fully implemented. The second one here is increase efficiency and effectiveness of core task function libraries. The libraries play a really vital role at time of like increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of working task functions. As a task matures, new ways are discovered to perform tasks more efficiently. These new techniques, which may include optimizing the coding function, using newer operating system libraries, etc., need to be incorporated into the core function library that are used by the current project and all projects. So this becomes more important parameter in terms of understanding that how exactly this works. In continuation, we have the next one as target multiple functions that act on the same control type of consolidation. A large part of what occurs during an automated test run is interrogation of controls in the GUI. This interrogation serves to provide information about that control, example visible or not visible, enabled or not enabled, size and dimensions, data, etc. With this information, an automated test can select an item from a drop down list, enter data into the field, read a value from the field, and etc. There are several functions that can act upon controls to elicit this information. Some functions are extremely specialized, while others are more general in nature. So this is what we try to understand as a part of like functions which act as different or same control for consolidation, and we can combine them together to be a part of the TAS framework. The next year is refactor the TAA architecture designed to accommodate changes in the SUT. It is really crucial for you to understand and identify the area of tasks which will be able to accept changes from time to time. If it is incapable of adapting changes, it will become hard-coded and could be difficult to be modified as the SUT changes. So through the life of a task, changes will need to be made to accommodate changes in the SUT as well. As the SUT evolves, and matures, the underlying TAA will have to evolve as well to ensure that the capability is there to support the SUT. Care must be taken when extending features so that they are not implemented in the bolt-on manner. 
but instead they are analyzed and changed at the architectural level of the automation solution. This will ensure that as with new SUD functions require additional scripts, compatible components will be in place to accommodate these new automated tests. In addition, we do have naming conventions and standardizations to be considered as a part of improvising the test automation. As the changes are introduced, naming conventions for new automation code and function libraries needs to be consistent with previously defined standards. So standards must remain the same no matter you're creating something new, updating the existing. Make sure that the standard uh, naming conventions are being followed so that it does not conflict with any names which you use as a part of the frameworks or the script. Evaluation of existing script for SUT revisions and elimination as well. The process of change and improvement also includes an assessment of existing scripts, their use and continued value. For example, if certain tests are complex and time consuming to run, decomposing them into several smaller tests can be more viable and efficient. Targeting tests that run infrequently or not at all for elimination will pare down the complexity of the task and bring greater clarity to what needs to be maintained. In simple term, as you evaluate your tasks, you realize that there are certain test cases which is no longer required to be executed and you can actually move them out of your test suite. As you move them out of your test suite, your test suite becomes lighter in weight and faster in performance. And that's a lot of value to improvement of the test automation within organization with respect to SUT. So this is what we got uh, from this particular section of chapter 8. We'll be getting back to you with the last tutorial of this series with the sample questions on chapter 8. Hope to see you there. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding team about different context about this chapter. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your query and answer them well. Till then, take care and thanks for watching.